Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about something really important, but I don't want you to jump to conclusions. So let's start with a big problem, right? It's a big problem that affects many people, which is high blood sugar. And I'm going to share this tip to lower your blood sugar quickly. It's going to surprise you a little bit, but then you're going to realize why I made this surprise. I'm an endocrinologist. I do this for a living, unlike a lot of other people there talks about diabetes who don't see diabetic patients, let alone seeing any patients. <laughs> Let's get to the topic, right? Did you know that actually, if you really so desperate that you really want to bring your blood sugar down like super quick and in reality, it doesn't say your blood sugar is 400, okay? You want to bring this down now in the next two hours. Okay, I'm going to tell you the truth and then I'm going to tell you about alternative methods. The truth is, the insulin is the only thing that will lower your blood sugar faster than anything else because that is what your body needs. The insulin is the only thing that can actually lower the glucose. Yes, your muscles, you know, your hydration, all that contributes to it. But if you really want the blood sugar to go down in two hours, that's what you need to do. Now, I'm not an insulin pusher. I'm not a medication pusher, my enemies. I'm not a sugar pusher at all, but that's the reality. Now, how can we make this happen? Maybe not in two hours, but let's say your blood sugar is probably not running 400 all the time. Hopefully not. Although some insulin occasionally can be handy, but the point is we are trying not to use the insulin, right? Well, then I have some news for you. We should never depend on insulin. You cannot just eat carbs and just shoot insulin, right? We want our bodies to use insulin better because if our bodies are good at using insulin, we may not need the insulin as much because you are making insulin. You're not a type one diabetic, right? Unless some, you know, some people are 30 years into diabetes and they didn't take care of diabetes very well and they may become insulin dependent later. That's a different story. But let me ask you this. Why do you think that the doctors prescribe insulin and medications right away? Well, let me tell you another secret. It's because patients and healthcare insurances often look for quick results. And patients are the same way, right? They go to the doctor, you know, they like, Hey, just fix this, you know, because it's not diabetes anymore, or I want my sugars come down, just do something about it. Well, diabetes didn't happen overnight, right? So why do you expect to fix things overnight or in, in a matter of a few weeks? The diabetes happened to you within years. Now, you don't have to take years to fix it, but you have to look from a different angle. So... This approach is a little bit misleading. We should shift our mentality from fixing things very quickly to fixing things permanently, right? So don't look at diabetes as an isolated problem. So consider the big picture. The root cause of many diseases are interconnected. Diabetes, you know, if you think about it, sick people, you know, people have diabetes and then they have other problems they may not even realize. They may not have a name for it, right? So diabetes is easy to diagnose. Your blood sugar is high, you got diabetes. Okay, great. How about all the fatigue? How about all the mental fog? How about constant weird symptoms that you don't know what's happening, like aches and pains, right? Those are actually, could be diseases, but most of the things that we just don't know why they're happening. But the root cause of a lot of things are very similar. Embracing a healthy lifestyle is crucial, and healthy lifestyle is different for everybody, right? So when I ask, you know, how's your diet? Everybody says, my diet is great, you know. Everybody is doing great with the diet. Everybody's doing great with exercise and whatnot. But, you know, you have to be careful about what the lifestyle means. There's a lot of things that go into that. And the results will not be immediate, but the long-term rewards of proactive health management will ultimately pay off, leading to overall health, not just you know, diabetes. Diabetes is part of the problem. The bigger problem is the unhealthy living, right? Well, being good at insulin can be an important part of lowering blood sugars. I mean, some, some people are doing a phenomenal job with not taking too much insulin and still controlling your blood sugars and eating well and not gaining weight and not having any side effects. Great, but there's not that many people that can do that. Let's talk about uh, fasting, right? Not eating for a while. It will help over time. It will not go blood sugar right away, especially if you are very insulin resistant. It's going to take a little while. And you may want to incorporate exercise, especially on the days that you're not fasting. And on the days you're fasting, you should probably be only eating 800 calories instead of like 8,000 calories on that feeding period. But on the days that you're not fasting, maybe you should also exercise so your body learns how to use insulin. Or you reduce the pancreas's job 
to make insulin all the time because if your muscles are active and it doesn't have to be your leg muscles it doesn't have to be your hip muscles you know if you have problems with some joints use the other joints or other muscle groups that work like your arms you know hopefully you know drinking water some people will say yeah you know i i get up in the morning my blisters are hydrating some water and it comes out well great but if you are dehydrated the rest of the day that's not great either so Definitely dehydration will raise your blood sugar and sometimes fasting will raise your blood sugar unless you continue to do it and eventually it's going to come down. Not getting enough sleep, right? And stress. And people are stressed about and, you know, people are angry with each other all the time. Do some fun things, relaxing things, just be at peace. That is a big part of health. People don't realize that. You know, they just stop eating sugar, you'll be okay. Well, I wish it was that easy, right? Well, we don't want you to eat sugar, but... You know, you have to also look at the holistic, the whole health, not just one part of it. Of course, eating organic is important. If you cannot eat organic, you have to be extremely careful on cleaning, peeling. You know, make sure you're not exposed to pesticides. We talk about this in other videos as well. Consider investing into your health using a CGM. See how your blood sugars are running during the day. What's spiking your blood sugars? Consider using supplements after discussing with your doctor, if your doctor knows anything about them, by the way. But it's good to run it by your doctor. They may know a thing or two about the supplements, although they're not trained on it. Bitter melon or berberine, those are great for help manage blood sugars, and most doctors probably never heard of them. But Nothing wrong with educating your doctor and maybe doctor will learn something and will maybe we have these nice big libraries that you know electronic libraries we can just type some things and it's like google but it's the paid version you know, like super high-end version of google you can say it can filter data for doctors doctors can get information quickly just like lawyers do i guess but in your case i mean you can definitely ask and run it by your doctor if they don't object to it and definitely a lot of supplements can help not every supplement will be good for you so that's why we have a quiz on our website you go to sugarmds.com take a quiz see what you need that will be helpful uh, to start with but if you're not eating well if you're not drinking enough water if you're not sleeping well if you're not managing stress none of the supplements will work either people look at the supplements as if like is a game changer you know better than medications no they're not better than medications but you cannot beat the medications because the medications are designed to really be very strong and the problem with that approach is it's like chemotherapy right so yeah it kills the cancer cells but then it also kills your body cells too that's why they have a lot of side effects yeah you want something quick and to get things done fast but then yeah you're gonna have to deal with the side effects and long-term consequences so it's better to fix the entire lifestyle and sprucing it up with some supplements right that is the key high fiber food is something that you have to have the typical american has five to ten grams of fiber in their diet you have to get 25 30 40 grams of fiber leafy greens nuts seeds they will also slow down your digestion reduce your spike so instead of concentrating on how to lower the blood sugar once it's the 400 we need to concentrate on what can we do to prevent this 400 again apple cider vinegar small things right it may not be a game changer but it is something that you can add to your meals and think about this everything you put to your body you have to be graceful first of all say grateful say thank you to food say thank you to god appreciate it and take as a nourishment those supplements are the same way you have to believe in them that they're going to help you if you don't believe in the food if you don't believe in the quality food if you don't believe in the quality supplements then it's just not going to help you your brain is very powerful so if you tell your brain that yeah you know this doctor talks about this stuff but i don't think any of them is true i'll just do whatever i want or yeah i'll eat organic but i don't think it's do want to do anything no you cannot do that you have to believe in it as well Simple things, again, lemon, put into your water, lemon juice, right? It helps to absorption of the carbs. Apple cider vinegar is the same thing. It prevents the blood sugar spikes. There's a lot of medications that do similar things. They're just very strong, right? You can have a small snack of a protein with meals, for example, before the meal, or anything that is less carby can be the first choice in the meal. For example, have your salad and soup first, hopefully like a lentil soup or something healthy, and then you can go for something that may be not as healthy, but at least you didn't have to go for that first, so you don't have enough space to consume all that unhealthy food. Sometimes we just have to eat what our partners cook or whatever. There's different social situations that no matter what I say or do, you know, you have your own life, so we respect that. There are a lot of home exercises you can do, right? Don't think that you are helpless. Um, you can do 
sitting exercises you know you can do gentle movements you can have like small weights and you know make repetitive weight lifting that are with the small weights that's gonna pump your heart rate up and that is one thing that you have to look for like one good exercise is seated leg lifts right you can just be sitting in a chair on a strong chair hopefully right so nothing happens hopefully uh, so stretch one leg out straight right do that hold it for a few seconds and then lower it you know and uh, put some music put some tempo to it whatever it will help strengthen the muscles around the knees and hips which is going to help your joints at the same time and it's going to help your diabetes another great option is like wall sits right you can stand against the wall with your feet apart we did videos on that as well before you can slide down into the seated position while keeping your back against the wall that's great because that's gonna give you a lot of core body strength and leg strength as well uh, if you are feeling comfortable with it, I and mean, try to hold 10 to 15, 20 seconds, however you can long uh, hold, can increase the time as it gets stronger. You can do like seated marches. You know, this is another thing that you know a lot of people do. At the edge of the chair, you sit there and then you lift your knees up and down like you're marching. And it's going to help your core. It's going to help your uh, legs and keep you more stable. And don't forget to stretch, right? So seated hamstring or calf stretches, for example, uh, can make your legs and hips more flexible and relieve tension that believe it or not can help your blood sugars always listen to your body and talk to your doctor before starting any new crazy exercise routine if, if you're going for you know all nine yards and you have to be a little careful sometimes if you have heart problems and so forth but to recap insulin sensitivity is crucial in managing your blood sugar levels right so if you're very insulin resistant and your blood sugars are very high sometimes you have to take insulin but hopefully we don't want that to happen right then we have to make our body sensitive to insulin so that way your body can basically process glucose more efficiently so you can lower your blood sugar by taking a little walk just drinking some water and next thing you know your blood sugar is down when you're more insulin sensitive and if you're not controlling your stress lack of sleep consuming foods high in pesticides and all that stuff will damage the pancreas health and when your pancreas cannot release insulin for high blood sugar there's no way you can bring that blood sugar down cortisol is a big hormone that's a big stress hormone it makes for insulin to do this job really you know it makes it hard again sleep does the same thing a lot of counter regulatory hormones including cortisol uh, will go against insulin you will be like hey why is my blood sugar not coming down although I'm doing everything right but again you're not doing certain things right for example sleep or stress can be a big challenge you know sometimes people will grow their own foods if you can not go organic and then you have to do your own sometimes but if you want to avoid pesticides you know you you have to follow certain guidelines about how to wash them and how to clean your hand after washing them how to use uh, certain things like apple cider vinegar and whatnot to clean them uh, to peel them etc the outer layers and so forth so these are the things that are small things but most people don't pay attention to but it accumulates right so when it accumulates it causes damage and we don't want that one thing that a lot of people also don't pay attention to taking deep breaths right so instead of panicking and freaking about your blood sugar 400 take some deep breaths and do some mindfulness exercises and you know not just when your blood sugar is 400 just you know do this in general this will reduce stress it will help your blood sugar flow hopefully by using these tips you can take charge of your blood sugar again and instead of looking for where the insulin is when your blood sugar is high so hopefully you will never have to do that again because you are taking care of your body well in the long term your blood sugars will keep coming down so that you can drop the insulin hopefully and get your freedom back now if you want to learn more visit our website subscribe to our newsletter we have a lot of tips and tricks for you so but thanks for listening today and i'll see you in the next video appreciate you hello everyone thanks for watching and this year we are announcing for 2025 january start a diabetes reversal program and we need your input so go to diabetesreversalformula.com and sign up be a thought leader give us your recommendations how to create this program so we can beat diabetes together see you later